might zoom in there a little bit. Very quickly. Just be careful you don't go over the edges. You want to get a nice sharp edge. There, I can still skip that edge because he's going to be dark. That should be fine there. Alrighty, so to get the, the molding on him right, to get the highlight for the orange, you're going to have to add some yellow and some white to it. So in other words, the next color up on the color wheel towards yellow. So orange is a lucky guy. He's automatically got yellow. So that's my highlight color. So we'll put him in. Now I'm not going to put him on the edge. I'm going to put him around here. So just pop him down. Wipe the worst paint off the brush and soften the edge. You don't want to go with this highlight all the way to the side because that tells you your, your sun isn't coming from the top. It's coming, it's the, 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 there's, a, there's a light that's lying flat on, on the table, almost like a spotlight or something like that. So by adding that last little bit of a shading there, it completes the rounding. So I've got that over there. And now for the shadow side, I'm going to take my orange and darken it. So let's add some red into it. So if I'm going to start by going the next color down on the color wheel. I'll see if that gets me dark enough. And if it doesn't, then I'll start adding some of the opposite color on the color wheel. So I'll start off with the red. Pop him right on the edge. Get the worst off the brush and then just using a nice little soft tapping motion or a brushing motion will work him in into the orange. If necessary, even pick up a little bit more orange on your brush to make sure you get a nice transition between those two. You don't want any line there. Remember your jelly bean is nice and round. It's got a continuous roundness to it. So there's no hard lines or corners there. So we can't get any lines in ours either, so we'll have to continue softening until he's disappeared. That should be about the trick. <laughs> Claude says, Nolan, stop saying jelly bean. <laughs> You must really, really feel like a jelly bean at this stage, by this stage, eh? Okay, so I'm going to squeeze out another little bit of touch of white to my palette quickly, and I'm going to pick some of that up. Or you can use some of the sky color if you've done a, if you've just done your little wash for the to get the varnish effect on the wood. You can use some of that. So in other words, I'm using a little bit of sky color because I, I do have a reflection in the jelly bean. Let me show you on the on the photograph. Let's zoom in over there. See over here, we've got that little bit of a, a reflection going on over there. So that's what I want to work in there now. And can you see the red, the red in there? And can you see the yellow in there? Okay, so sticking to the rules. Now I'm going to add a little bit of a reflection in there. Uh, something like that. That should be enough to make him look shiny. Now 
Now I'll quickly do the same for the for the next two jelly beans. <laughs> Claude, you can be lucky I don't know a jelly bean song, eh? Alright, so we've got a red jelly bean there, eh? So I'll start with, so it's actually pink. So, you know what, I think I'm actually going to use, instead of red, um, I actually think I'm going to use a little bit of, uh, like an alizarin crimson. Or if you've got a magenta or a rose meadow, one of those colours, yeah, you can use that as well. That's also going to give you a nice little... Uh, a nice pink. I find the cadmium red doesn't always give me such a nice pink. It tends to be a little dull. It all depends on different brands. Some brands give you do give you a nice one, other brands don't. So I'll do that. So what I'm doing is I've just let's go over to there. So I've put down a little bit of crimson. Now I am working in a little bit of cadmium red into it. Just to get the rough color matching going on there. And let's see, just a touch of white to get it to a pink as opposed to a red. Yeah, I'm happy that's probably fine like that. Get a lighter version over here. Go. So again, I'll block in my whole jelly bean. Be careful to go nicely up to the edge. If you have to go slightly over the edge, just don't leave a white outline or a halo around your, around your jelly beans. Come up over here, make sure that those guys are going to touch each other absolutely perfectly in the most kissing each other there. Like that. Cool, let's add our highlight in. So pink is an easy color because to get a highlight you just add more white. Because pink is actually just a fancy name for reds gray. To get a gray you add white. So I'm going to pop in a bit of white over there. Like that. And then we'll blend him in. So I'll take the worst of the brush. And just gently tap in that all the way around there. Now I'll wash the brush and we'll add in the, the dark side. So for there I'll use some more cleaner or more pure alizarin crimson. And if necessary, we'll add a touch of French Ultramarine into it. Just to darken him up even more. And we'll take him right onto the edge. That's not quite dark enough yet. Not quite enough contrast. We were talking earlier about the, the the acrylics tend to tend to be more opaque. Well, your alizarin crimson is one of those colours that is not opaque; it's transparent. So, it just shows you they're not all opaque. As a general rule, you can think of the colors that you've in, in your oil box that are that will be transparent, will also be transparent in, in acrylics as well. 
Это был покрыл. Okay, so we get him faded in. I'm going to give him a quick dry so that I can add my highlight on him. So again, I'll use my sun color. And the sun I hit him, probably something like, something like that. Just tapping it to sort of, again, just soften it and blend that or fuse that reflection into the, into the jelly bean. Cool, bananas. Last one. I think for the last one, what I'm going to do, we've got a green jelly bean like that. So for there, I'm actually going to use a little bit of uh, viridian with some cadmium yellow in it. That gives me always a nice bright green. So let's do that. Get some yellow in it. Now be careful if you're working like me right next to the red. Make really sure they don't touch. Well, the red being the opposite color, if you get a, just even just a touch of that red in there, it's gonna dull it down and then you're going to have a dead, a dead jelly bean. We don't want a dead jelly bean, we want a nice, lively, bright, luminous one. So again, I've mixed up my middle colour. Which I'm going to use to block in the majority of my, my jelly bean. All except the shadow colour. Getting that edge nice and sharp. I just got an idea, Claude. Seeing as you really feel like some jelly beans, why don't you uh, paint yourself some and eat them? There, like that. Alrighty, so now I'm going to continue adding yellow into the mix. Yellow and a bit of white for my highlight color. <coughs> so let's get that highlight color down there like that. Okay, Lynn says she has to go. Well, thanks for hanging out for for over the time like this. See you Lynn, have a great day. Okay, let's blend him in quickly. Till the line is gone. And I'm going to add more viridian into the mix to, to darken that green. And again, your viridian is one of those colors that are also transparent. Same as with the, in the wells. If you battle to, to get it dark like this, with a, when you're working with a transparent color, what you do is just get it as best you can, shade it in as best you can like I am doing now. And then if you're working in oils, let it dry. If you're working in acrylics, quickly dry them off. And then give them another layer. So then what happens is that second layer is lying on top of 
a green instead of white, then, then that transparency is, is effectively being reduced. So just then build it up in layers to lose that. And that, that's, that's the way you lose that transparency. That'll do the trick there for now. Don't worry too much about those shadings. Just dry them so we can put our reflection on. So again, I'll pick up a little bit of my sky color and we'll pop him on. He's going to be rough, very similar to the to the pink one. So we'll put some paint down there and we'll just soften him out so he's not so perfectly hard. And it'll just fuse that, that reflection in there again. Yeah, that should be the trick. Okay, I'm going to zoom out and let's see what he looks like. Okay, there we go. The last thing that I'll show you guys, I know we're well over time, but I want to, I really want to do it. And that is to show you how to add, knock in a nail inside your, inside your, um, your wood. So let's maybe go in here to... Here on the side, let's maybe go over there and let's go knock two nails in there on the side. So what I'm going to do is you know, st start off with a nail. And I'm going to take three primary colors. So I'm going to take blue, yellow and red. Blue red and yellow. So I'm mixing up a black, so lots and lots of blue, roughly half that amount of red and half that amount of uh, yellow. And I'm going to add a little bit of white into it. And that's going to give me a nice little steely kind of a gray. I think let's keep him quite dark. Okay, let's go over to the canvas. And let's knock a nail in, say, there. Bang. And let's knock a nail in, say, there. So if I'm doing it with this, the guys usually, you, if you had to lay this floor yourself, you would judge those distances from the top and from the side. <clears throat> so if you've got a repetitive bunch of nails or whatever to knock in, then just bear that in mind. Of If you were really laying that floor or whatever, where would you really put them? Okay, so I've got that gray there. Now I'm going to add a little bit more white to it. Just to get a lighter version. And I'll maybe put a few little lines going down, say in that direction there. A few lines going in, say that direction there. In other words, different directions. You'll often find a, a, a nail's got this little ridge on the top. So you, you can sort of skip the step but I, I prefer not to because I feel it gives it that little bit of a shiny look to it. Do that. Then I'll wash the brush and use some of my original black that I mixed. And just add a little bit of a... You do sort of the same thing for a screw as well. Just add that little darker edge there in the center. Like that. Okay, so at the moment you've sort of got a nail, but 
still looking kind of boring, eh? So what you got to do is come back in with your wood color. Remember like we had that those little holes? So you've got your... I'm actually going to use a rigger brush for this one because I need a really, really thin line. So I've got my, my rigger brush and I've loaded it with this these highlight colors that we originally used. Now my sun's coming from the top right, so if that's indented into the wood, then this here would be lighter there like that. Just lighten him up a bit more. Or you can use your sky color as well, guys. Remember? Same thing. Same thing. There. And there. And now is a good time, if you haven't managed to get a perfect circle, now is a good time to go over the line and, and sort out your little circle. But again, how much, how much effort and how much time you put into that will all depend on how weathered you want to look, your, your, um, your wood to look. Now I'm going to use the shadow color, the darkest color that I had for the wood. So that was, in, in this case, it was uh, burnt sienna with some ultramarine in it. And again, still using the, the rigger brush. So I've just given him a quick wash. And I'll put that on the opposite side. Like that. And that sinks him in. Like that. Pretty cool, eh? Easy peasy. Okay, guys, I think that's all I've got for you today. So I hope you enjoyed that. I think what I'll do is I just want to quickly show you how to convert that from a flat surface. Let's move to there. I'm going to show you how to convert this from a flat surface to a, a bowl or something like that. So let's see. Let's start off with this guy over here. You'll notice what happens is on a flat surface, you've got one solid coloration on it. Now, look over here where you've got, say, a curve. Now, two things happen. The grain of the wood twists to follow the um, the shape of your of your profile plus in this case this guy here is pointing more towards the light so he's lighter and as he points away from the light he's getting darker and here at the bottom you'll see he's pointing away from the light so he's darker over there and again right over here at the top he's pointing more away from the light so he's darker over there and as he comes down to here he's lightening up so that's what you'd need to do if you say paint, painting a wood bowl or so on look very carefully at your actual um, wood grain to see how does it mold to follow the shape of the actual bowl or whatever you're painting and then look out for those reflections and those shadows. Now these reflections and shadows, you put them in afterwards like I showed you. So you'd use your reflection wash over there and here you put in a shadow wash over there. Paint this whole thing one color, it's fine. Just use those little washes afterwards. Okay, let's go to there. Okay guys, that's it. I hope you had fun. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. Cheerio and have a good week.